Welcome to the Fed Life Podcast with Dan Seip from Serving Those Who Serve. In this podcast, Dan draws from years of financial experience to help federal employees overcome challenges that every Fed can relate to. Join us for this journey as we reach, teach, and serve to help you make the right financial decisions. Now, on to the show. Bump, 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 bump. Oh, wait, we're on. Oh, I get so wrapped up in that intro music. I love it, especially the guitar riff. Hello and welcome to this episode of the FedLife Podcast. I am your host, Dan Seip, additional head branch manager here at Serving Those Who Serve and Lee Seip and Associates. And as you can see, I'm a little bit excited today because we have, again, with us, the incomparable, the guru, Ed Zerndorfer, as part of our mission to reach, teach, and serve you. But pump the brakes, big shoots. Hey, I forgot to tell you. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service to me and every other person in this country. You don't hear it enough. You will always hear it here. And as long as I've got this channel, I'm going to keep saying it. So Ed is back. And as I always have to do, I have to say, I apologize, you have to hear this over and over again, that the opinions of our guest Ed Zerndorfer, or Ed Zerndorfer are not the opinions of Raymond James or Serving Those Who Serve. This podcast is, rep is presented for information only and is not intended to be taken as advice. All listeners should consult their personal advisors before taking any action. And if you don't have an advisor, shoot us an email at, uh, at Serving Those Who Serve. Check out our website. It is a treasure trove. It sure as heck is not going to look like it's a financial planning company, I'll tell you that. That is who we are. That is what we do. That's how we help people. But we also have this, this outreach where we're going to make sure you get the information you need in an understandable format that is timely and accurate and easy to find and easy to understand. And Ed is a huge part of that, and we're very grateful for that. Uh, if this is your first time, the podcast topics will mirror Ed's Fed Zone articles. He writes several a month for us. You can find those at fed-zone.com. Be sure to grab the article because many times we'll be talking about something and Ed will have some exceptional visuals in there to, to help you understand it. They, they really, really, really are a treasure trove. So with this episode, we're going to be talking taxes and Social Security because as I've mentioned in the past, I learned if I do entire episodes on taxes, Folks don't listen as much, and there's still some important stuff in there for you. So now I'm, I'm mixing the, the, the meat with the dessert here, so we'll be covering both of those. And again, if it's your first time with us, in addition to being, and I have to say one of, but I really think he is the guy, uh, one of the top experts and authorities on federal benefits, he's also an enrolled agent with the IRS, which means he has a tax practice also. So he's helping, he's helping people every single day, every single week, every single month, every single year with tax things. So we'll be jumping on that as part of this. So Ed, your, uh, your third FedZone article walks us through tax changes from 2020 and 2021. The first have to do with the CARES Act. So let's go ahead and jump in on that because your first topic talks about the stimulus payment. Why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yes, so um, as a result of the passage of the Consolidated uh, Appropriations Act of 2020, which was signed into um, law by, um, I should say, former President, I guess now, former President Trump on December 27th, um, um, uh, individuals were eligible for the stimulus payments. This, this is the second round of stimulus payments. The first round was, was, uh, was last March. And this is the second go round. So, what's involved here? Um, the, uh, the eligible individuals, and I'll explain in a, in a moment here who's eligible, um, would it re be eligible to receive up to uh, $600, up to $600 um, individuals. And uh, in the case of a married couple, each would get $600 for a total of $1,200. Plus, if they have any children under the age of 17, um, each child would get, uh, 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 the parent would get a, a check for $600 for each child under the age of 17. Now, as I say, you have to be eligible, and who is eligible? Um, someone whose income is below a certain level. So if you're a, um, and this is based on 2019 adjusted gross income, adjusted gross income. So 
Um, I, I guess most people have filed their 2019 taxes, so they'll know what their adjusted gross income is. So if they were if they're filing as single during for 2019 and their adjusted gross income was less than $75,000, they would get the full amount of $600 stimulus payment. A married couple, if their adjusted gross income for 2019 was less than 150000 they would they would get the full twelve hundred dollar stimulus payment. Now, single individuals um, without children, um, the, their payment will phase out over to, over uh, between seventy five thousand. And once they reach eighty seven thousand dollars of adjusted gross income, they are not eligible for a payment. And married couples, their their payments phase out from uh, anything above a um, hundred and. Um, a hundred and fifty thousand, and once they reach a hundred and seventy four thousand uh they would not be eligible for any amount of a stimulus payment uh the The payments are made uh direct deposit into the same bank account used used to file for individual when individuals file their two thousand nineteen taxes um, now if for some reason someone did not receive a stimulus payment. As we speak now, it's my understanding that the IRS has sent out all the payments. The Treasury has sent out all the payments, and if you have not received your payment and you think you're eligible to receive a payment, you will be able to claim a credit on your 2020 income tax return. There will be a line on that on the, on the 2020 tax return um, that will, for people who did, for one reason or another, to have not received their second round of stimulus payments. Just want to point that out. And tax preparers, I know this was told us, you better make sure that you ask your clients whether they have received the, 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 the stimulus payment because they on their own cannot contact Treasury to get that payment. They have to do it through their, through their tax return. Gotcha. Makes sense. And uh, pressing on, there are some changes for unemployment compensation as well, correct? Well, yes. Um, <laughs> um, thank God federal employees uh, did not really uh, lose yeah. their jobs during 2020. Let's count our blessings on that. Indeed. Um, but they may have had some spouses who worked in private industry who lost their jobs. Unemployment compensation um, is, in fact, uh, taxable income. If anybody has received uh, uh, um, unemployment compensation, um, um, and it also it's, it's 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 taxable for both federal and state income tax purposes. So if you live in Maryland, D.C., Virginia, all these states have state income taxes, and you received any amount of unemployment compensation during 2020, you will uh, have to pay tax, federal and state tax, on the amount received. You will be receiving. Um, hopefully this month, a uh, 1099G. G stands for government or good. <laughs> G stands for good. So uh, and a copy of that 1099G will be sent to the IRS. So you have to claim it, and it is taxable. Nope, makes sense. Uh, now, Ed, continuing with, with your article in order, uh, a lot of feds, utilize flexible spending accounts. And, and we've talked about them. We're fans of them. Uh, but we've got some changes there. Why don't you touch on that? Yes. Um, um, many federal employees, they contribute to health care flexible spending accounts or the other type of uh, uh, flexible accounts called a dependent care flexible spending accounts. Um, and the general rule, Dan, about flexible spending accounts is it's a use or lose situation. If you do not use up the money that you have set aside during the year to pay for health care expenses or dependent care expenses, the normal rule is you're going to lose you're going to lose that money. If you retire, or if the if the end of the year comes and you and you have elected um, in the case of the health care not to extend it into the following year, any money that you did not use will be forfeited. Um, but as, as everyone knows, during 2020 was a very interesting year because federal employees, um, when it come, especially when it comes to dependent care expenses, they had, they had, they had small children and they, they, they set aside money to pay for dependent care. And where did the small children go? They would go to, let's say, the nursery school or they would go to daycare centers 
or 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 maybe there was a um, daycare center in 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 the federal agency. Uh, many federal agencies have these daycare centers. But what happened come March? Federal employees were told, in most cases, do not come to work. You have to you have to telecommute. Right. So and the children couldn't go to school. Daycare centers were closed, so the gotcha. employees could not could not use up their money. So um, the first thing that happened was that in around July 1st, OPM um, made a ruling that employees can actually uh, decrease the amount of their money set aside in their flexible spending account. The rule, the normal rule is when you set aside the amount of your a paycheck that's going to go into the flexible spending accounts, and you make that during the open season. So in this case, the open season was in um, November, early December 2019. When you make that election to have that money set aside from your paycheck starting in early January, you cannot change that election unless there's a life event. A life event meaning, for example, um, you, um, uh, so you, you, you have a child, you have another child, or, um, a, a, God forbid, a family member dies, something like that. There's a, some type of life event. You, you, otherwise, if you don't have a life event, you can't change it. Well, OPM, because of the, um, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, said that there's going to be a special um, period of time, about six weeks, in between last July, July, I think it was July 15th and August 31st, in which employees could change the amount, um, decrease the amount in their both their health care medical, health care flexible spending account, as well as in their dependent care flexible spending account. And I, I guess the question comes up, why would somebody want to decrease the amount of money going into their health care flexible spending account? You would think during this pandemic that people would want to you know, sure. take full advantage of it. Well, I don't know if you remember this, Dan, but, you know, when when the pandemic was, you know, really going full force last spring and summer, mm -hmm. a lot of people said, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I'm afraid to go to the doctor. Gotcha. I'll just uh, I'll just, I'll just forgo the visit. To heck with it. You know, I don't want to take any chances, you know, going to the doctor. So people did not really use their health insurance. They didn't incur any out-of-pocket medical expenses. So they, they really did not use their flexible spending accounts. So th this, this was a mid-year decision. Well, um, then, and later in the year, as part of the Consolidated um, Consolidated uh, Appropriation Act of 2021, Congress modified the FSA rules. And what they did was, and this is a, this was a, a passed a few weeks ago, participants in healthcare flexible spending accounts and dependent care flexible spending can carry over unused funds from twenty from the year 2020 to 2021, as well as 2021 into 2022. Another change they made that for dependent care at the dependent care, the um, the uh, age in which you can use your the age of a child that you the maximum age you can use your dependent care flexible spending account to pay for pay for daycare, child and summer camp things like that was extended from age 12 to age uh, age 13. So there was a big change there. So the FSA programs is, is adopting these rules, and, and the bottom line is individuals do not have to worry about losing unused funds from 2020 into 2021 as well as into 2022. Okay, that is great news. Uh, and folks, again, I'm going to direct you back to, to the article because uh, we're going to be jumping around a little bit here. But... Contained within it, there will also be some information about relief for medical expense deductions, uh, modify, modification of withdrawal rules for IRAs and qualified plans like TSP in the event of natural disasters. But I want to kind of hit uh, on a high note here. And last but certainly not least, there was good news for charities and charitable feds. Why don't you talk about that, Ed? Yes, uh, the Consolidated Appropriation Act extended and expanded charitable uh, contribution deductions for individuals who take the standard deduction. Let's just go back to the basics here. When you file your taxes, you have a choice to make regarding uh, deductions. You can take the standard deduction, which is a flat dollar amount 
depending on your filing status, single, married, filing jointly, head of household, married, filing separately, you uh, get a, a, a certain dollar amount uh, that you use as your standard deduction. For example, my wife and I, we file as married, filing jointly, and our standard deduction for 2020 is uh, $25,800. Now, the other choice is to actually itemize your deductions. What are, what are itemized deductions? Uh, medical expenses that exceed a certain percentage of your adjusted gross income, um, state and local taxes, which are capped, by the way, at $10,000, mortgage interest, is still deductible, um, and charitable contributions. Those are the big itemized deductions. Now, notice here that if someone, someone um, who takes the standard deduction under the old rules, oh, you don't, don't get me wrong, you still could make charitable contributions. And, that's, and you should make charitable contributions for the sake of giving, but you're not going to get any tax benefit. But under, under the CARES Act, um, a special, uh, the two, two changes were made regarding charitable contributions. Number one, if you take the, if you take the, if you use the standard deduction, you do not itemize, you would be allowed a $300 charitable contribution deduction. This deduction is an adjustment to your income. It comes off the top of your gross income. Again, if you itemize, you don't get that $300 deduction. It's only for people who, stay, who take the standard deduction. But I got to tell you, Dan, that's $300. Um, that's per household. Whether you follow as head of, of, of single, whether you follow as head of single, um, or head of household, or marry filing jointly. Marry filing jointly, like, like myself and my wife, we take the standard deduction. Mm-hmm. We're only allowed one $300 deduction. Gotcha. That's it gotcha. for, for the charity. Uh, the other change that was made under the CARES Act for travel contributions is that um, if you do, if you do itemize and you really like to 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 to, don't, to give to give charity, what is the limit for giving charity for 2020? All of it. One hundred percent of your adjusted gross income. You could give it all away, Dan. Yep. <laughs> you could give it all away. That's some real charity right there, brother. <laughs> and that, 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 that deduction is going to continue. That change is going to continue for at least the next five years. That's my understanding. Gotcha. So um, l- l- let's be honest. I mean, we give, we give because we're supposed to give. We're supposed to help yep. the, the people who are, you know, the organizations that need the money. And believe me, yep. there's no lack of organizations who needed the money during 2000 and, and, and 10. Look at, look at the food lines and the churches and the synagogues and mosques that were, you know, you know, helping people just put food on the table. So we, we definitely had lots of opportunities to give to, to, give to charities. Um, now, the Consolidated, the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2020, this is the, this law was passed, changes things a little bit changes things a little bit regarding charity um, going forward in 2021. Okay. Um, the, um, it, it allows, it's the, same, it's the same $300 deduction per person. However, when it comes to married individuals filing jointly, they get a, two of them at $600, a $600 deduction, a $600 that, deduction, not a three, one $300 deduction. That's even so better. So for 2021, my wife and I will be able to write off $600. How? As I said a few moments ago, under the CARES Act, that deduction is an adjustment to one's income. For mm-hmm. 2021, the deduction reduces federal taxable income. Yep. Federal tax, but it'll reduce your, your the amount of your income subject to tax. And people say, well, that's good. That's good. Well, maybe for some people that's not good. I'll tell you why. Because there are some um, expenses. For example, I'm enrolled in Medicare Part B, and what I pay for Medicare Part B is not each month is not based on my taxable income, it's based on my adjusted gross income. Mm-hmm. Adjusted gross income. So it's nice to get those deductions sometimes from the AGI. From the AGI. Gotcha. So 
that was that that was the change that came about as a result of the um, charitable of the of the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2020. Okay, and folks, again, head over to the Fed Zone, fed-zone.com, and pull up Ed's article because it really is a treasure trove. He's he's giving you updated tax brackets, capital gain, and TSP contribution limits, Social Security information. It's 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 worth the trip. So so head over there and uh, and pull up Ed's article. All right. So your fourth article is a little bit of a math riddle. So if you are a Fed born between 1955 and 1959, I'm not a Fed, but I am born between 1955 and 1959, and you are collecting Social Security, I am not. You need to be careful of the dreaded earnings test. So Ed. Um, Let's let's hypothetically make me a Fed. Uh, I've I'm, I'm in that age range. I'm collecting Social Security, and I also want to you know get out of the house and make a few bucks. Uh, what do I need to know? Well, here's what you need to know. The first thing you need to know, Dan, is that Social Security retirement benefits are really designed for people who are really, really retired, really retired. Gotcha. Not that Social Security doesn't want you to work after you retire, but if you're, let's say, close to full retirement age, you're not there yet. Your full retirement age, Dan, a little birdie told me, is 66 years and four months. That's amazing. But you, yep. I think a little birdie told me that. Yeah, I think so. Too. And right now, you're a little younger than that. Okay, you're not. Yep. You're not there yet. Okay, not there you're not yet. there yet. So, um, and if you were, let's say, retired, fully retired. And you decided, you know, I, you know, something. I, I really like to, to, you know, start drawing my social security because, you know, um, I, I, I like to get that dollar in my pocket from social security because, you know, I've heard this from people as well. I better take social security now because it may not be around later on. Well, I, that one I'm not going to buy. That one I won't buy. Okay, um, mm-hmm. but if you you feel you have a need to take social security for one reason or another to pay your bills, please do so. Please sure. do so. So you take your Social Security before your full retirement age, you get you get your payments, and you say, hmm, I really I really miss working. Maybe I can make a few extra bucks. I like my Social Security check. And you start working, and you earn a nice amount of money. You will likely be getting a letter from Social Security. Dear Dan, we are so happy to pay you your Social Security, but... We don't like the idea of your working so so much and earning so much and drawing Social Security. So you know what we're going to do, Dan? Mm. We're going to reduce your Social Security check. We're going Ouch. to take back some of the money we gave you. Ouch. Ouch. Now, what's too much money? So for anybody who was born in um, 19, 1950, 1950, uh, 1956, mm-hmm. 1957, 1958, or 1959. In other words, this year in 2021, you are between the ages of you will be between the ages of 62 and mm-hmm. the year you turn 66. Got this it. Is according to my math, if you were born again in 1956, 1957, 1958, or 1959, you will be sometime this year between the age of 62 and uh, the year you turn age 66. Yep. So what this means is that if you want to draw Social Security, yes, you are eligible. You are eligible to draw because you're at least age 62. If you draw your Social Security, keep in mind that if you start drawing your Social Security this year, right off the bat, your Social Security will be reduced. Why? Because you're under your full retirement age. The rule is that if you start drawing Social Security before the month you turn full retirement age, any time any, any before that, your Social Security will be reduced. How much? It could be as much as 25 to 30 percent reduction. Example, somebody born in 1959 who's drawing Social Security this year, at age 62, their Social Security would be reduced 30%, 30% of 
what they would get had they waited to their full retirement age. 30%, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a permanent reduction. So, for example, if their Social Security monthly benefit would have been at age at their full retirement age, which happens to be 66 years and 10 months, a little, mm-hmm. a little, under, a little under age 67. But anyhow, if their benefit at their full retirement age is $2,000 a month, 30% of 2000 is 600 Starting at age 62, they would get $1,400 a month. $1,400 a month. Gotcha. And that $600 reduction, Dan, is permanent for the rest of their life. Yikes. It's not going to be restored. That, that, that $600 reduction will not be restored once they reach full retirement age. Gotcha. All right. So the person said, I'm going to start drawing. So, Dan, we're going, we're going to go back to you. So you're going to draw your Social Security, and you're going mm-hmm. to work. So how much could you earn this year without losing any of your Social Security? No, this is an annual amount. This is month. salary, wages, or maybe you want to be self-employed, Dan, have your own business, and you have a profit. The most you can earn this year without losing any of your Social Security benefits would be $18,960. Mm-hmm. For every $2 you earn over $18,960, Social Security will take back one dollar of your benefits. Okay. So you know, I, could Dan, earn, I could earn my way down. Dollars is not a lot of money. It's not a so lot of I money. Could, I could earn my way out of my Social Security payment if uh, if I got a pretty good gig and worked a lot. Yeah, I think you, if you earn more than fifty thousand dollars, I think that's how the math works out. If you earn more than fifty thousand, you lose all of it. Gotcha. Now. And by the way, no, I Dan, I, this is not in the in the column, but I think it's worth mentioning. In the first year, in the first year that you start drawing Social Security under your full retirement age, it is not an annual test. It's actually a monthly test. It's a monthly Ooh. test. You have to report to Social Security each month what your earnings are. So if gotcha. you take eighteen thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars mm-hmm. and divide it by twelve, twelve months mm-hmm. of the year, that's fifteen hundred and eighty dollars a month. So if you earn more than $1,580 a month, in a given month, you report that to Social Security. Suppose you earn, let's say, $2,000, $2,000 in that month. That means that you, owe, you, owe, you went over the limit by $420. What is Ouch. Social Security going to do to you, Dan? Uh, I'll bet they're going to take something away from me. They're going to they're gonna reduce – they're going to reduce – Future monthly benefits until uh, you know the four hundred and twenty dollars until the, so that they're going to take away from your monthly payment for a total of four hundred and twenty dollars. Gotcha. So um, uh, it doesn't pay in that sense. If you're if you're going to go out and get that that well paying job and draw Social Security, it's not worth it because you're going to end up giving it back. Sure. And this is now the I'm... test. Of, I know. Oh, I know. Ahead. I'm going to answer. I know. I'm going to ask a loaded question here. So, if uh, if one of our feds finds themselves in that situation and they they do have those reductions, uh, will they ever get any of that back? <laughs> uh, the answer is yes, because once once they reach full retirement age and they're working and drawing Social Security, they can earn as much as they want. They're going to get they're going to get their regular monthly payment with no reduction. It's just what they're losing is just the the, the amount of money um, that they they went over with. But once they, that money has been paid back, they're reverted to the to, to the to the normal um, to the to, to their normal monthly payment. But they're also going to have to keep their records in order and watch that, correct? Yeah, they have to be on top of it. You know, the again. Again, after, after, after that first year becomes an annual test, an annual test, and Social Security will get a copy of their W-2 showing their Social Security earnings. And once Social Security has, has determined, they have determined that for the past year the person earned more than they were supposed to, they're going to send a notice to the person for during this year, the current year, we're going to reduce your benefits um, each month until 
the, that 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 the, the, the amount of money you went over with, you went over in the previous year, um, is paid is 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 deducted from your from your check. Now again, just to emphasize, once you reach full retirement age, you can work as much as you want, draw Social Security. There is no more earnings test. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's it. The, the, the earnings test ends the month you became become full retirement age. So, for example, Dan, like I said, a little birdie told me that your full retirement age <laughs> is age 66 years and four months. I, I yep. hope the birdie was right. Birdie was right. Okay. Birdie was right. So that means, let's say, for example, your birthday, your birthday month is. Um, I'm going to throw one out here. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna, let's just make this up for just just do just, just do this for um, uh, as an example. We're not. We don't know for sure what your birthday month is, but we're going to make it up. Okay, Dan. That works. Your month. Your birthday is in July. Got it. So you're turning full retirement age the year you turn 66, which is which is 2022. You're yep. turning age 66 in July 2022. Let's go forward four months, Dan. July, August, September, October. As of November 2022, you have reached your full retirement age. Yay. Your full retirement age. But I have another surprise for you, Dan. Oh, I hope it's a good if surprise. If you're going to be working during 2022, there is another earnings test that you're going to be subject to. Oh, boy. That earnings test starts as of January 1st, 2022, mm-hmm. and ends on October 31st, 2022. Okay. That is the what I call the one for three earnings test. What this means is that if you are drawing Social Security during this, this the year that you become full retirement age, up until the month that you become... Um, full retirement age. Mm-hmm. In, our exa- in the example here, that's November 2022. Yep. Between January 1st and October 31st, 2022, you can only earn maximum, and, and for this year, that amount is $50,520. $50,520. For every three dollars you go over fifty thousand five hundred twenty dollars, Social Security will take back one dollar of your benefits. One dollar. Ouch. Okay, it's a one for three deal, but okay. they allow you to earn a little bit more. Okay. Now, I just got to tell you, when I turned full retirement age, that was about that was four years ago. My full mm-hmm. retirement age is sixty six. Mm-hmm. I was very fortunate. Because my birthday happens to be in January. Gotcha. <laughs> so I could earn as much as I want. I didn't because I delayed social. I t- delayed taking my nice. social security. But I just want to make make um, make it make it. Uh, just want to make that point that um, for people who are born towards the end of the year, I, I, maybe 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 you know somebody Dan who was born in October, or November, December of um, 1956. Maybe you do. I don't know. Um, but those <laughs> poor people uh, have um, are going to be subject to that earnings test, that one for three test, anywhere between January first or toward the end of the year, uh, to all the way to mm. almost to the end of the year. Sounds yeah. like that hypothetical person might not actually be going after that until the next year. <laughs> well, you know, that, that 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 person is more than welcome to to, to, to ask me any questions. That uh, whoever whoever and that, that goes for any Fed and so on. So we talk about this during our Social Security webinar um great great, and, uh, great segue the there test. you go <laughs> so uh it's a plus because this earnings test many 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 people are just not aware of the earnings test they they, they jump on the opportunity to draw social security um to to um uh, earlier than they really need to i mean granted 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 um uh dan that some people really have to start Social Security earlier yep. than expected because of, for, for, for a variety of reasons. 
So I cannot say no one should ever no one should ever draw a Social Security for forward coverage. That's not fair. Everybody's circumstances are different, but you're really encouraged to talk to a qualified financial advisor about this to know everything that you need to know about when to draw Social Security. And that's another great segue because through our association with Ed, we are we are doing everything within our power to make sure that anybody that you that you interact with with our our firm is going to be able to help you with that. And uh, you know we're 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 here to help. Uh, if if you just have a question, we'll take care of questions. If if you want to go further, we're happy to do that as well. And and don't forget, folks, we we touched on it just a second ago. Uh, pretty much every month, we've got a Social Security webinar featuring the guru, Ed Zerndorfer, and his uh, his protege, Jennifer Meyer. Uh, that's going to be going on all year. Plenty of opportunity for you to jump in on that. And as I touched on previously, our next up, next up podcast, it's going to be the guru's journey through Social Security claiming. So Ed is going to give us that uh, that insight. Get over to uh, scwserve.com. You'll see the red button for uh, registration. Hit that. Register for one. Register for all. Ed and Jen are dynamite. You will not regret it. Folks, that is a wrap. And Ed will be back with us as we continue to reach, teach, and serve you. We are serving this deserve. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast on, your, on our YouTube channel and Spotify. Share it with friends. Share it with your enemies. Share it with your neighbors. Just share it everywhere. Uh, check us out on Twitter and LinkedIn. And, and again, 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 do not forget those webinars. So the guru will come to you. You can learn anywhere. You can learn in your house. I'm going to sound like Dr. Seuss here. You can learn in your house. You can learn with a mouse. You can learn in a car. You can learn anywhere. So for Ed, the crew at Serving the News to Serve, and me, Dan Seip, good luck, Godspeed, and above all, remember, it's your fed life. Make it a great one because you deserve it. Stay well, everybody. We are out. Thank you for listening to the Fed Life Podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of serving those who serve or Raymond James. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Securities offered through Raymond James Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Raymond James Financial Services Advisors Incorporated. Serving those who serve is not a registered broker dealer and is independent of Raymond James Financial Services. Raymond James is not affiliated and does not endorse the opinions or services of any of the quoted professionals or their respective firms. Any opinions are those of Dan Sipe and not necessarily those of RJFS or Raymond James. This case study is for illustrative purposes only. Individual cases will vary. Raymond James is not affiliated with and does not endorse the opinions or services of the quoted professionals or their respective organizations. Neither Raymond James Financial Services nor any Raymond James Financial Advisor renders advice on tax issues. These matters should be discussed with the appropriate professional. Investing involves risk and you may incur a profit or loss regardless of strategy selected, including diversification and asset allocation.